Hi. 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 Hello, Ryan. Hi. What do you have for us? I'm the Wagey Cannon, and I know that this channel seems like it's dead, but I swear that it's not. Um, I'm just using this channel for the videos that don't fit my other channel. Anywho, have you ever searched for something on YouTube and not found what you were looking for? Or at least something like quite close or quite similar? It's rare, but it does happen. A few years ago, I searched for videos on how to do specific things on my motorcycle. I found a whopping zero videos. I mean, like, I found some videos that were in the same kind of ocean, but I needed them to be in the same bathtub, if that makes any sort of sense. But I suppose I should get started. Um, I ride a 2016 Suzuki Boulevard C90T, so the T stands for touring. Uh, a search on YouTube reveals many videos on the late 2000s uh, C90Ts but barely anything, if anything, for the late 2010s. Uh, normally you could wing it with the knowledge from those videos, but Suzuki changed a whole bunch of things, which makes this rather impossible, like locations of things and all that stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a few things that will hopefully help you out if you have a bike that is similar or even a C90T from 2016, even better. Now, if you can get your hands on a maintenance manual, they are awesome and they are worth their weight in gold. I love gold. However, good luck finding one that is legit. Um, that being said, I got my hands on one. It was very difficult and very expensive, and it's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. If you find yourself with any questions about this bike, feel free to message me. Uh, that being said, I've only tested this knowledge on my 2016. So if you have a 2018 or, I don't know, a 2014, just, you know, be smart. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to go over what you need to do a oil change of the motor, a final drive oil change, and to save yourself some time and money if you're having a shop replace and balance your tires by removing the hard saddlebags that come with the touring motorcycle. So I was going to record my voice while actually pointing things out and doing all the stuff on my bike, but my neighbor is in his garage and uh, his tunes were cranked to, I don't know, 11 if you're into uh, Spinal Tap. Uh, I also didn't feel the need to subject you to Hank Williams Sr. Lord, I don't know what to do. All I do is sit inside. Anyways, let's start with some money and time savers when it comes to having your tires replaced or balanced, or both. I mean, hopefully both, because if you're replacing them, you'll need them balanced. As most of us know, time is money, and if we are going by the hourly wages, a motorcycle mechanic's time is apparently worth more than mine. So let's remove the saddlebags. Keep in mind that Suzuki is Japanese, and as such, it's using the metric system. You'll notice four hex bolts. Those are all that hold your saddlebag to the saddlebag frame. Now, the bolts that are on the vertical wall closest to the tail, they have a loose nut behind them meaning that the nut is not welded to the fender. Each one of these bolts also has a washer and a spacer. Don't lose them. <laughs> when you've got the saddlebags removed, use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the saddlebag brackets. Um, the muffler side, so that's the right side of the bike, if you're sitting on it, has a heat shield attached to it. Um, but that's okay because it, you don't need to remove the heat shield for this. To help you remove the bracket, loosen this bolt that I'm pointing at, and it'll give you tons of clearance. It'll kind of like roll out of the way. Now, the bolts and spacers that were on the vertical walls of the saddlebags, put those back into the holes that they were, um, that they were in before and tighten them up. 
that'll keep these chrome bits that I'm also pointing to from flopping around. With that done, the mechanic will have clear access to the tires and the wheels, so it'll make his life a lot easier. He won't need to remove the saddlebags, and that saves you money. But let's move on to changing the engine oil. First thing you want to do is warm up that oil. The hotter the oil, the less viscous or thick it is, right? So start up your bike and run it for 10, maybe 20 minutes. If you're doing this in your garage or shop, open the door. There is no sense in having a motorcycle if you're dead from carbon monoxide. That's why it's called the invisible killer. Now, use a lift or a block of wood to hold your bike vertical. What you want is that vertical. You want it to be upright, straight up and down. That'll help drain all the oil when you're ready to drain it. So here's your oil drain plug. What you're going to do is remove the oil dipstick, which is on the left-hand side, just above your shifter. Uh, it's black. Yeah and round so you'll you'll find it by removing this we are eliminating any sort of airlock that will be created by our next step with a pan or jug or whatever you can find to drain the oil into underneath the oil plug it's time to open that baby up be sure to not let the oil plug fall into the oil because that's just fucking messy there should be a washer on that plug as well save that just in case there's more on that in a minute. While the oil is draining, remove the filter. There will be oil in that as well. So oil will come out. So have something underneath that to be able to catch that oil too. Now wait. While you wait, take a look at the oil plug. There's a little magnet in the middle of, of that oil plug. And it's normal to see a few fine metal bits in there. Um, that's totally fine, that's totally normal. What you don't wanna see is large chunks of metal. If you do see large chunks of metal, you have a big problem and you should probably bring it to the professionals. Eventually, all the oil will drain out and you'll be ready for the next step. The washer that was on your oil plug is called a crush washer or an oil plug washer. It's made of really soft aluminum or it's made out of copper, one or the other. Now, the size for this particular bike is an M14. And that's metric 14. That is the size of crush washer you're looking for. That's the replacement. If you can't find one, you can use the old one if you're in a bind. I would suggest not doing that because if the guy who put it on before totally crushed the shit out of it, chances of it leaking are pretty good. The crush washer's only purpose in life is to get squished and to create a seal so that no oil leaks from around the oil plug. So tighten her back up into place. Now there is a specific torque spec, but just tighten it firmly enough to compress that washer at least a little bit. Um, the torque specs are a little bit suspect. Plus most people also don't have a motorcycle torque wrench. They have an automotive one and that'll get you in a big, big bind, which I will explain later. The next step is an extra important one. With a bit of the new oil or the old oil, lube up the top of the oil filter and spin it into place. Oil filters have a rubber gasket, so you don't need to crush this one. Just tight enough so that you can't remove it with your own hand. Now, you can talk to a hundred different people and they'll all give you a hundred different answers um, as to what oil is the best. The maintenance manual that I have says 10W40. So that's what I went with. That's what I use, that's what I've always used, and that's what's working. Uh, I use Motul 7100 in particular because it has a red tint to it. Now your bike will use between three liters and four liters of oil. You'll need a funnel first of all. Place the funnel into the oil dipstick hole and pour the oil in. Clean the dipstick and insert it back into its original position. Wait a few seconds, then pull it back out to gauge how much oil you need to put back into uh, for it to reach the full line. And that's why I use the Motul 7100, is because it's actually tinted red, so it's easier to see on the dipstick than the, uh, the light amber color of other oils. So, when you get it to the full line, replace the dipstick, tighten it up, start your motorcycle and run it for a few minutes. What this will do, is it will uh, fill the oil filter and it will also fill any sort of crevices inside your engine with oil. Then you turn your bike off and check the oil level again. 
it will be lower than it was before. Um, so what you want to do is fill it back up the way you just did to the full line and then replace the dipstick. Congratulations, you've just changed your oil. If that's all you needed, great. But I'm still gonna uh, move on to the final drive oil change. So as you probably have noticed, this bike has no chain or belt. It's actually shaft driven. That means that your engine turns a, a shaft, so it turns a pipe, and that pipe turns a gear, and that gear turns your back tire. These gears are in what is called the final drive. There isn't a huge quantity of oil inside the final drive, but you'll still need something for it to drain into. Once you have that in place, you can remove the large plug on the side of the final drive using a 17 millimeter socket. This will not be super tight because it has an O-ring. It'll be tight enough that you need a wrench. Obviously, you can't remove it with your hands. What this will do is also eliminate any sort of airlock. It'll allow the oil to drain quickly. Now, under the final drive is an oil plug much like the one under the motorcycle for the engine. In fact, it is the same and it requires the exact same crush washer. Once the oil has drained, you will want to install the oil plug with a new crush washer. Be sure to also check this plug for metal fragments because it also has a, uh, a magnet in it. If you find fine stuff, totally okay. Large chunks means no bueno, bring it to a professional. Get them to figure out what is going on because there is a major issue. What you do now is you tighten the bolt on the bottom, the oil plug bolt, and it's oil time. So final drives use a different type of oil than engines. This type of oil is called hypoid gear oil. This stuff is much, much thicker than engine oil. And the maintenance manual says to use 80W90. So that's what I use. With the bottom oil plug installed and tightened, use a small funnel to pour the oil into the final drive. This task is much, much easier if there is no saddlebag in the way. Now, what you're looking for is for the oil to reach the level of the plug hole. It doesn't need to be completely full of oil, just up to the point where if you poured anything more, it would pour out of that hole. It's very, very, very simple stuff. Now before you put the plug in and tighten it, inspect that rubber o-ring. It's good practice to just replace it, however, just as long as it doesn't look damaged, you should be fine. But that is it. You're all set, that's all the oil you needed, everything's done, everything's tight, double check. What I normally do is I will leave it vertical for a few hours with something underneath there like a cloth, a white cloth and I will just leave it underneath anything that could leak. And I will come back and if there's a leak on there, I will tighten it up and then do this whole step all over again. That way I can be sure that there are no leaks. But that's it. Here are a few things to have on hand while you do this though. So WD-40 is expensive. Any penetrant will do. Also, I use rubbing alcohol to clean parts. Brake clean works, but it's super, super brutal stuff. And one final note, never, ever, ever use an automotive torque wrench on a motorcycle. They are not accurate at the low torque required. Your parts will end up looking like this. So yes, um, you will shear parts and it'll piss you off and you'll have a really bad day. Um, normally with like cars and things, they're talking about 50 or 60 or 80 or whatever, 100 um, foot pounds of torque. Motorcycles, they're talking like 14 and a half foot pounds. Good luck measuring that with a automotive torque wrench. That brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully this can help somebody who has some sort of shaft driven bike. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I've done some really cool wiring on my bike for certain accessories. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that because I can make a video, I guess. But uh, until next time, I'm Wichi Cannon. Be safe and play nice.